Hello everyone, welcome to Model Based AAA. This is based on NetConf Access Control Model RFC 6536, like how to create rules for users logging into devices using NetConf or RESTConf protocol. And before start, let me introduce myself. I am Krishna Kotta, working as a technical marketing engineer at Cisco Systems in Enterprise Switching and Wireless BU. And my main area of focus is automation and programmability. So these NetConf or RESTConf are industry standard protocols uses Young data models for managing network devices. These protocols do not provide any mechanism for authorizing a user with different privilege levels. Every NetConf or RESTConf user should be a super user with privilege level 15 to configure anything on the devices, right? In networking world, we don't want every user to be a super user, right? For example, if we have contractors in our company, we don't want to provide complete access to them. We want them to restrict for particular operations like configuring the devices or any other show commands. We can implement this with model-based authorization. We can set rules for different privilege levels and using protocols like radius or locally configured we can assign those contractors to that privilege level. Once we set the rules for that privilege level, now the contractor will have access only to those rules. It is like a group-based authorization scheme for data and operations modeled in Young. In access control model, there are like four different ways we can create a rule list. First one is protocol operation. It is like an RPC, like edit config or get config or delete config. For example, if you create a rule for get config for a privilege level 5, and now that user logged in as edit config, he will get denied because you set rule for get config only. So basically, you can set rules for different operation protocol operations like edit config, get config, or delete config. And the second one is a module name. So if you want to provide access only to particular models, we can use this operation to create rules for permitting only to certain data models. For example, if you want to provide access to privilege level five users only to access Cisco IOS XE native. So you can create a rule just to access the native model as permit. So any user logged in as privilege level five will get denied access any other data models other than native. And the third one is data node. If you want to access any leaf or a container in a data model, we can specifically create rule for that path in a data model. This is like creating more precise rule. Say for example, if you want to provide a, create a rule for updating host name on a device for just privilege level five users. So you will create a rule for that privilege level five group and any user logged in as privilege, privilege level five, he can update the host name. But the same user, if we try to update any VRF or configure any IP address, he will get denied. And the last one is the notifications. You can set rules for the name of the notification you want to get user to receive notifications for permit or deny. This is the tree structure of a NACM module. You have rule list container to create different rules for the groups. And these are some of the access controls we discussed in previous slide like uh, protocol operations, notifications, data node. And also you have, we have like a groups container that means you can add different users in this group and then we can create rule list for that group. So once user gets authorized by radius server or locally configured, he will set particular privilege level, right? For example, here a user called user1 authenticated by radius server and the radius server set him in privilege level 5. So these are all the different groups we have in NACM model. We can create rules 
for each group and any user in this group will have all those rules we set for example for the privilege level 5 group I, say I will create some rules and now any user with this privilege level 5 will apply all those rules to that user let's see a short demo on this so first I will show my radius server which is running let me log in into my radius server So if you see my free radius status, it is active and running. Let me show you some users I already enabled in my radius server. So these are some of the users I added in radius server. First one is a Cisco with uh, privilege level 15 and the other one is a user 1 with privilege level 1 and the user 2 with privilege level 5. So we will use only these three users in our demo and I am using Yang Explorer tool uh, and it's already running here. Let us go back to Yang Explorer. So I have my Catalyst 9300 switch. So I selected this one and let me change to the user like the privilege level 15 user Cisco and Cisco. Now if this is my IETF Netcom access control data model if we do get config on this data model by default I will have only one group that is privilege level 15 and the name it can be anything it can be admin or it can be anything and here the rule itself it says the name is permitting all like permitting everything so my privilege level 15 users can access any model, can do any access operation like can do get config, can delete, can update, can do anything and the action is permit. So by default if a user logged in with privilege level 10 or anything other than privilege level 15, he will get denied. Okay, And let me try with the same configuration with the user 1 he will get denied because I don't have any rule set for privilege level 1 so this user my user 1 is in privilege level 1 right so that's why he will get denied the error tax is access denied now I have some RPCs custom RPCs for example this RPC is to create a rule for IETF, NetConf and Cisco IOS XE native model. So this, I have a rule list called contractors and a, and the group I gave as a prove 01. So this, in one of the rule I have is permitting the NetConf operation. So this is common to most of the rules and the other rule I have here is permitting the native inter model. So I have my module name like Cisco IOS XE native and I'm doing the access operation as read and my action is permit. So if I try this RPC, let me log in with Cisco and Cisco, let me clear this custom RPC and if I run this, I got access as OK and now if I do get config, on the NACOM model, let me run. Actually, let me remove the custom RPC. So now get config on the NACOM model. So I have my privilege level 15 and I have another rule uh, rule list called contractors on the group name is priv01 and I am permitting IETF NetCon and also I am permitting Cisco IOS XE native data model, right? So now I have my data model here. So for example, if I do get config with the user one, he can access everything in the native model, right? Because this user one is in privilege level one and I already and I already have a rule for privilege level one, right? So 
now we try the same thing with the user 2 so my user 2 is in privilege level 5 but I don't have any rule in privilege level 5 right so if we do RPC uh, run on this user 2 he will get denied access denied because I don't have any rule created for privilege level 5 okay now let me show you the update so this is another RPC I have to update like the using the node operation so now I want privilege level one group users can update only the host name right so let me send this rule I should log in as Cisco with privilege level 5 to send this rule to the switch let me clear this So for the same privilege level one group, I am updating node operation like saying update native under host name. You can change the host name. Now let me do the get config on the NACM model. So if you see here, for the rule rule list contractors name under group prep 01 I have like one rule permitting the net comp and another rule permitting the iOS XC native only the read operation and I just now I added another rule permitting the host name like updating the host name right to update as a access operation now so currently let me see what my what is my uh, host name is so let me do get config on this and if I do run so currently it says cat catalyst 9300 now I want to change the host name so I want to change something like 9300 is awesome so let me change the user one because I already created rule for user one like privilege level one right so if I do RPC on this and if I do run And I got OK. OK, let me do with get config now. Yes, now my host name changed it to 9300 is awesome. Let me try with user 2. So, user 2 with privilege level 5, I don't have any rules, right? If we try it now, if that user tries now, uh, he will get denied, right? And tag says access denied. And let me show you one more thing here in the groups so now I can create or I can create custom groups like for example any group name maybe like IT users and, oh sorry here IT And I can add different users in that IT users group name like IT user 1, IT user 2, and IT user 3. Let me change to Cisco to Cisco. And if I run this, I got OK. Let me do the get config on this NACM. now if you see here i have a group called it users and i have different users here and also i have my default privilege level 15 and i have my priv 01 group with an ietf netconf uh, permit and cisco ios xc native read operation permit and also i can update the host name for this priv 01 now you can create same rule list for this group as well okay this is my demo and let's go back to the slides so you can save your configs 
MACM data is persistent and remains in the data store even if devices, uh, if even if device is reloaded or techconf is restarted. So to conclude, by using model-based authorization, we can create a rule lists for different privilege levels. So different users can have authorization what to access and what to not to access and also you can create groups and add users in that groups and create rule lists for those groups okay thank you